Let us start this video with the most important information about informed consent. Informed consent is not just a form or a document. It is a process. The process in which the subject is being informed about all aspects of the trial before the subject voluntarily consents to participate in a clinical trial. Good clinical practice, GCP guideline definition, will help us to better understand what the informed consent is. According to GCP, informed consent is a process by which a subject voluntarily confirms his or her willingness to participate in a particular trial, after having been informed of all aspects of the trial, that are relevant to the subject's decision to participate. Informed consent is documented by means of a written, signed and dated, informed consent form. Although we take this process for granted nowadays, consent for subject participation in clinical trials, has not been common practice in the past. Even in the trials we highlighted as positive examples in the history of clinical trials, study subjects were not informed about their participation in a clinical trial, nor they gave voluntarily consents to participate. Throughout history, there is evidence of the experiments on the participants who were forced or unaware of participation in medical research, such as prisoners, psychiatric patients, minority groups, and others. The most extreme example of this practice was inhumane and unethical medical procedures and experiments on humans in concentration camps. This research was done on involuntary participants, who usually died as a result of the experiment. On November 20, 1945, in Nuremberg, Germany, a series of trials were held against members of the Nazi Party, responsible for war crimes, committed during World War II, in what became known as the Nuremberg Trials. A separate war crimes trial, of German doctors was held, as part of the Nuremberg Military Tribunal in 1946. This trial led to the Nuremberg Code, a set of research ethics principles, for experiments involving human participants. The most important, and the first point of the Nuremberg Code, is the voluntary consent of the human subject, for participation in a clinical trial, or any other form of experiment. Although the Nuremberg Code does not provide precise instructions on how to document consent, it does give the first outlines, of what we consider informed consent today. According to Nuremberg Code, the subject should be informed about, the nature, duration, and purpose of the experiment, the method and means by which it is to be conducted, all inconveniences and hazards reasonably to be expected, and the effects upon his health or person which may possibly come from his participation in the experiment. This means that before voluntary consent, all the necessary information about the research should be explained to the subject, in order to exercise the free power of choice. Since the Nuremberg Code, has not been officially accepted as a law by any country, or as an official ethics guideline by any association, in 1964, General Assembly of the World Medical Association, adopted the Declaration of Helsinki, as a set of ethical principles regarding medical research, involving human subjects. One point of the first version of the Declaration of Helsinki, is the requirement to inform the subject about the trial, before obtaining voluntary consent to participate in the research. According to the Declaration of Helsinki, the doctor should obtain the patient's freely given consent, after the patient has been given a full explanation. Considering that the Nuremberg Code, and Declaration of Helsinki, did not give clear instructions on how to obtain voluntary consent from the patient, physicians were forced to improvise. Through the 50s, 60s, and 70s of the 20th century, physicians involved in research, informed patients about the clinical trial and received consent verbally. The second revision of the Declaration of Helsinki, from October 1975, significantly updates the requirements on obtaining informed consent. Among other instructions, a new version of the declaration, gives the following instruction. The doctor should then obtain the subject's freely given informed consent, preferably in writing. The discovery of unethical medical research, in the 1960s and 1970s, following the aftermath of the Tuskegee Experiment scandal, led the United States Congress to adopt the National Research Act. The National Research Act, established a National Commission for the Protection of Human Subjects, of biomedical and behavioral research, to develop guidelines for human subject research, and to oversee, 
and regulate the use of human experimentation in medicine. On September 30, 1978, the Commission published the final report and recommendations, known as the Belmont Report. The Belmont Report summarizes ethical principles for research involving human subjects and identifies three basic ethical principles, which are respect for persons, beneficence, and justice, and three primary areas of application which are informed consent, assessment of risks and benefits, and selection of subjects. The recognition of informed consent importance is identified in the first ethical principle, respect for persons. The report states that respect for persons demands that subjects enter into the research voluntarily and with adequate information. Regarding informed consent, the Belmont Report identifies three main goals to the informed consent process, which are information, comprehension, and voluntariness. In this section about information, the report recognizes the shortage of common information proposed by previous ethical standards, such as the research procedure, purposes, risks and anticipated benefits, alternative procedures and a statement offering the subject the opportunity to ask questions and to withdraw at any time from the research. Additional items have been proposed, including how subjects are selected, the person responsible for the research etc. Special attention is given to the comprehension of informed consent. According to the Belmont Report, the manner and context in which information is conveyed, is as important as the information itself. And finally, to be in line with previous ethical standards, the Belmont Report recognized voluntariness as part of the informed consent process. An agreement to participate in research constitutes a valid consent only if voluntarily given. The Belmont Report elevates the informed consent process to higher level than any previous ethical standard, and it became one of the leading works concerning ethics and healthcare research. It allows for the protection of participants in clinical trials and research studies. The principles of the Belmont Report remain the basis for the United States Department of Health and Human Services Human Subject Protection Regulations, International Council on Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use, ICH Guideline on Good Clinical Practice, GCP, incorporates the recommendations of the Belmont Report. The GCP gives more detailed instructions on informed consent content and process. However, GCP requirements regarding the informed consent process will be the topic of a separate video.